Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a weekly podcast devoted to all things spirituality and self-improvement. I am so happy you're with me today. We have a very special guest. Today we have with us Miss Mary Jo Cranmore, and she is an intuitive astrologer and a spiritual path healer. But she's here today to talk to us about how astrology can help us discover our life purpose, which I think... It's such an amazing thing. There's so many people out there who are feeling lost right now and feeling like they don't know what their purpose is. So I think this episode is going to be so healing for a lot of people. I'm very excited about it. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited awesome. to talk about this. Yeah, I'm very excited about it too. And I've always been interested in astrology, but I just kind of scratched the surface. I do tarot a little bit, but I don't really delve too much into birth charts and things like that. So I'm excited to hear your perspective on this. So how did you first get into astrology? Uh, I, I've been interested in astrology pretty much since high school. So that's a long time ago. Um, and really, you know, um, you know, sort of just the lighthearted horoscopy kind of existence and delved into it a lot more in my thirties and forties. I just, I have literally thousands of books in my house. So if you look at my bookcases, they're just full of like astrology, tarot, spiritual topics, emerald tablets, la la la, just like everything everywhere. And um, so I started becoming really interested in uh, astrology more because I was in a career that was really burning me out. I was in a tell, I was a television news producer for about 15 years. And I also had my own marketing business for another, I don't know, five or six. And I just got to the place where I couldn't move. I couldn't do any, I could not, I just ground to a halt, like a car without changing its oil will. And, um, so I had a few clients that were repeating clients and I was literally looking at this business where money was coming in and it was just going out even faster than it was coming in. And there was no growth to this, no growth. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, I feel like this is my talent and skill. I teach people how to be on video. I teach people, I used to teach the anchors about um, being, you know, um, sort of more authentic instead of reading and stuff like that. And so um, it was just one day where I had three or four people and all at the same time kind of say to me, why don't you just do something else? And I had no idea what to do. And I came home and again, my bookcases are full of this stuff. And I happened to cross um, uh, the topic of North Node in astrology because I was really curious to see like, all of the astrology work I had ever really focused on was about soulmate relationships and, and all of that, like how we, how our energy, um, how our energy works around our lessons in this life and our healing with Chiron and things like that. But I was like, what in astrology shows me uh, my path? Cause I feel like it's dried up. I feel like I don't have a path and I I'm only, you know, like 50 years old. I still have a good 20 years left of wanting to be doing something. So uh, I looked, I looked around and um, I found a concept called North node, which North node is a mathematical point. It's not a body or an asteroid or anything, but it is a point uh, around your moon. Let's just leave it at that. There's a lot of boring math that goes along with this. Nobody needs to bother with that. Um, and your North node is your purpose and your purpose, your path, which you're here to embrace. There's a couple of things there. It comes with a South node, which is something that you come out of the box with your talents and your skill set. Most people hug on to that South node when things go sideways because it's comfortable, but, and that North node is definitely not comfortable. It's brand new skills. It's like the universe is pushing you to learn something new in this life. And so I sort of dove into this and I learned about my own North node. I learned about the sign and the house and everything. And then I kind of just like, this is how I really knew that I was an intuitive astrologer because I right away just went to my mid heaven to see if how that would work together. And then where's my Saturn? And 
I just had this like incredible epiphany that it was more like music than it was like math. And it's funny because music is math, right? It's numbers and everything like that. And astrology is based on astronomy, which is also math. And so when I was starting to learn about this, when I was starting to learn about this North Node piece, I recognized that I was sort of floating through it as if I had some kind of masters in this kind of math. And I was like, okay, I was rubbish at numbers in school. So I don't know why this is making so much sense to me, but it did. That's interesting. I'm, I'm really bad at math too. So <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> so how does somebody go about finding their North node? So in your, uh, when you get a birth chart, I, I like this, I like this one site called astro-charts.com. I don't know them. They're not affiliated with me in any way, shape or form, but I like how clean and simple the charts are. Yes, you do need your birth time. It's really important that you do your best to find a birth time. I recognize that a lot of people, um, I started noticing that there was a ton of birth charts I was getting from the 1990s especially from Florida, where there was no birth time recorded. So you're going to have to ask your aunt or your mom's best friend or somebody who was aware of what was going on at the time. They could narrow it down for you. Um, my cousin's my cousin was born uh, right after 11 o'clock mass. So we knew that because her mother was at church when she went into labor. So we could make a, an assessment of when it all happened. Um, so anyway, so... Uh, the part of this that when you look at your birth chart, it looks like a little set of headphones. The North Node looks like a little set of headphones. And your South Node is rarely on that chart. But it's always 180 degrees exactly opposite. And they're always in retrograde. They never go forward. They're always in retrograde. And so when you look at your birth chart, you can, you know, on astro-charts.com, they have, they have the... Um, that it it's a it's like a, a line item that says like north node and then it'll say true node north node is the mathematical prediction of where it is the true node is where it actually is so the nodes go around your moon they're like an ellipsis around your moon and there's a mathematical point which again we won't talk about um but just focus on that true node if you can only see your north node that's fine and so how do you work with people finding their North Node to then help them get to the point where they can figure out like what is your purpose? And another thing too is, does that necessarily mean their career? Because I think a lot of people confuse purpose means what I should be doing for a living and vice versa. I agree. And, you know, I mean, this is our culture and I definitely have fallen into that a little bit. I, you know, I when I talk about North Node, I do, and I do find myself end up ending up talking about a job, but there's a difference between like in your astrology, your 10th house is your career. That's different than a day job. It's a career is sort of like what you're known for in this world. So in the Western world, we think about um, our career as, as it relates to a body of work that we've created over the course of our life. But it doesn't have to be, you know, a career can be someone who is um, really focused on their neighbors. This is what they're known for, right? There's a lady who lives a couple of doors down. She's the pie lady. Okay. She's seriously the pie lady. Everybody knows her. She brings pies to stuff. She brings pies to sick people. She's, you know, she's known for it. And I'm like, that's her love language. That's her career. That's what she's doing. I don't know if she makes money at it or not. But I know that that's what she's known for. And so when you work with the North Node, when you find your North Node, I'll just give you a little roadmap of how I sort of figured it out myself. Because no one really taught me, um, although there's some really good books out there. Um, and I'll I'll, um, I'll get you a link for some of my books that I like. I don't want to take up the time telling you what they are right now. But um, when I when I heard or when I read that North Node is your mission and purpose in this life, I was like, I got to figure this out. So I saw mine is at uh, four degrees Gemini in the eighth house. And I was like, okay, four degrees Gemini in the eighth house. What does that even mean? 
So I kind of, what you do is you sort of dive into what the sign is. That sign will give you a sense of the purpose. Gemini is a communicator. Every single thing I've ever done on this planet, I am known. I talk a lot. You can tell that. <laughs> um, I'm a communicator. Every career, every job, every friend group I've been in, I'm the one who's the communicator. When there are problems, uh, I notice because I'm having a problem communicating with somebody, or if I can't communicate with somebody, there's a big problem, right? And so part of my life mission is to clear up communication um, with people that are, that might, I might have a, a difficult time doing that with and being a clear channel, um, being a clear channel because the eighth house, the eighth house is the house of death, transformation, mediumship, astrology, tarot, it, but it's also the house of tax attorneys. It's also the house of uh, secrets, third party affairs. You know, it's all these things. Eighth house is, the, is what goes on behind closed doors that we don't like to talk about. Taxes, death, um, you know, anything that's that's secret. And if you think of the of your astrology chart, houses one through 12, we have all the signs. We have all the houses, everybody. You have every sign, you have every house. It may just not be as loud as somebody else's. But that eighth house is, you know, if the seventh house is the house of the, the bedroom, the marriage, you know, fourth house is the house of the, like the kitchen where we all kind of gather. That eighth house is the secret lair, right? The man cave, the place where we go to be alone it's it's where we keep our our secrets. It could just be a drawer in your house where you keep your journal or something like that. But for me, it became obvious that my job is to uncover hidden information using tarot, astrology, through being a channel, communicating, Gemini. So you kind of have to, um, astrology is art. And you one of the one of the um, most often asked questions is how do I know I'm doing it right? Mm -hmm. And what your job is to is do you hit a resonance with it? Is it something that you go like, oh my god, wow, I was doing that when I was in high school. I was I was doing that for fun. I was doing that. It was just a thing I just did. Like if you hit a resonance like that that says you're already on the way to embracing it. If you hit resistance, and there are a fair amount of people on this planet that will hit a lot of resistance because it's meant to be, this is something new for you in this lifetime. And I believe mediumship is new to me. Tarot is certainly new to me. Astrology is certainly new to me in this lifetime. And because I've looked at the rest of the astrology about past lives and everything like that. But when you look at that, there's two kinds of people, the kind of people that go, where have you been all my life? And the kind of people who are like, no, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. Yeah, that makes sense because I remember I went to a psychic fair several years ago, like long before I started doing a podcast or was open really to any of this stuff. And a lady did a, she had a speech that she did about how to open up to your gifts and then walked around and pulled cards for people. And then she picked me and she's like, you're supposed to be doing what I'm doing. And I remember thinking that was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. And like, uh -huh. there's no way, like I'm, I'm not a medium at all. And then it, if I could have seen then what I see now, what I know now, I would have realized, but it's just very interesting that you pointed that out. Isn't that funny? Like you have those moments in time when people say things like that to you and um, like you missed your calling or this seems like you're, this seems like something that's really natural for you. And my thing was that uh, a family of origin or like what I thought I was supposed to be doing and everything like that, no disrespect, like that's fine. Like your family is going to direct you in the way they think is best for you, uh, ideally. And you know, to be kind of woo woo, to be this like, you know, I mean, I was like going to be an, I was an executive producer. I was going to work at NBC. I was going to do all this stuff. And 
to be seen as a medium or a channel or doing tarot or astrology. Um, and then I just, I guess I, what's, that's what happens when you hit 50, you kind of just stop caring about those things and you just do what's, you know, what is in alignment with your gifts. Yeah, I agree with you. I think once you had a certain age, you, that's one of the things I think that has happened to me as I've gone through awakening is I've realized that a lot of what I believe doesn't align with a lot of other people in my life. And you just have to say that doesn't matter. Like just be who you are and not worry about what other people think. Yeah. It's, I think that's a very challenging thing, especially if I've noticed the other thing I noticed in astrology, that's really interesting is Chiron and you can tell your soul contracts with other people um, by how your Chiron intersect or interact with each other or don't. And um, I noticed that some of the people who are closest to me or have been closest to me over the course of the majority of my life now have sort of cycled away because they're, you know, I was in alignment when I was that person and then now I'm no longer in alignment. Yeah, I've seen that too in my own life. Um, a lot of people that, you know, family members that I was super close to, I'm not close to anymore, which is really odd. <laughs> it's, it's a strange thing, but it's, I also understand it's a necessary thing sometimes too. For sure. For sure. I mean, that's, you know, it, and it depends on like their growth pattern and your growth path, you know, um, we're meant to move in the direction of that North node. We're meant to move in that direction. And so when we, when we don't do it, like I definitely can see, um, I have a few people that I know very well who hugging on to that South node, like it's going out of style and I'm like, okay, well that served you for a while, but it doesn't mean that you get rid of it. So North node in Gemini means the South node is in Sagittarius, right? So think of the signs as having opposites. So if you can start thinking of astrology as when you talk about Aries, you're also talking about Libra in some way. They're opposites and they also have the absence of each other in them. Gemini and Sagittarius are the same. <clears throat> and when um, you go toward your North node and you activate those new gifts, what happens is the South node comes back online. So a lot of times the problems start in the South node and that South node can be Oh God, why can't I work? Why can't I get this job anymore? Why can't, why will no one hire me to do this? Or why do I keep getting fired? Or why have all of a sudden after 25 years or 35 years, I'm getting divorced? Like what? And you know, it's, it's a, usually it's a big life change and people try to stay in it. They try to stay in it. And then um, to go toward that North node will really give you um, the answer to the problem that's happening in that South node. But it's it's out of a comfort zone. So I do find that anybody who has a fixed sign, fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. <clears throat> if you have a lot of that energy, or if you have a lot of Earth energy, um, you know, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, it can be more challenging. It's not a rule. It's absolutely not a rule because just because you're a Capricorn sun doesn't mean you don't have a ton of fairy dust and unicorns somewhere else in your chart. Yeah, because I'm a Taurus and <laughs> it makes sense that we are very stubborn. I don't know I but I um I think that's interesting. So the north and the south node are often opposites of mm -hmm. the sign. Yes. And your south node tells you more about like the traditional type of career that you've been in or whatever. Um the life. south node will will usually the south node will house the gifts and talents that you bring here naturally <clears throat> when someone you know and and it it works for a while right it works for a while even there are plenty of people who have those south node you know skill set you know um south node in taurus can be um someone who's really good with money and someone who's, um, you know, maybe um, anything from a bookkeeper, accountant, all the way to like a hedge fund manager or somebody who's 
really, uh, or someone who's a, a gardener or a chef, someone who deals with earth, right? And to go towards Scorpio, wow. Like Taurus is much more about security and safety and Scorpio is all about risk. So, but to really be successful as a Taurus, there must be some risk. Otherwise you can't, you won't grow, right? You won't grow. You, if you don't, if you don't um, speculate in the stock market, you can't accumulate in the stock market. Um, if you don't, um, you know, get out and, and uh, till up the soil and get things going, then the garden doesn't grow. So there has to be some level of action and risk. Um, I can't think of anything uh, more just would freak me out. Like, but someone who ended up like, I got to be safe. So I'm going to stay with my parents. I'm going to live with my parents until like I'm 40. Can you imagine? That's a huge risk actually, because when you're 40, what are you going to do now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the, I can't imagine anything more risky than trying to be so safe that you don't grow. Because if you don't grow, there's just no possible, you're going to, all your peers are going to pass you by. And it's just going to, you're going to find out that much later, you know, it's like trying to read the whole semester's, you know, uh, work and homework and everything in one night. Like that's just, it's not a recipe for long lasting happiness. So the South node is, you know, natural gifts that you came here with. And a lot of people tend to go into a career that has to do with those natural gifts. Yes. But we yeah. came here to learn and to grow. And so we're supposed to move more towards a new area in our lives, a new venture. And right. this is probably where people are getting stuck because they don't know what that next step is. They just feel, because I know a lot of people right now, and I'm seeing a lot on social media when you look around of people saying, of course, I'm a teacher. And so it's especially big <laughs> in the teaching and the healthcare profession that people are saying like, I'm so burnt out. I can't do this anymore. And I don't like this job anymore. So yeah. you're supposed to be looking for something else. You're we live a long time now. We don't, you know, we're not, the average life expectancy isn't 35 anymore, right? Like we're living into our seventies, eighties, and it's going in the age of Aquarius, it's going to be much longer, right? We're going to have, you know, lifespans well into our hundreds. So if you could think about that, then likely what will be happening is there's like an early third of a career, a middle third, a late third, there might be no such thing anymore as how we do it at all. And um, so normally most people will embrace their natural talents and gifts, but still continue to grow as they get into that, right? Um, that's why I say like sometimes the earth or Virgo, especially because Virgo is, Virgo's really a healer. But a lot of Virgo uh, energy can be sort of lost in the day-to-day -day routine. And, but that's healthy, like eat your vegetables and go to bed at a reasonable hour. That's totally Virgo. And that's how you maintain your health. But true Virgo energy is a sacred servant of health. And so it's much bigger. And so it can be that um, you just have to embrace a little bit of growth to, in order to see the direction. Um, when people go toward that North node, especially if it scares them, I think that's a good sign because it will, you know, it's not, it won't scare you back into, you know, your South node as much if you've got some stuff going on in that South node. Like if you're really ready for some big change, then going toward your North node is going to feel like, wow, this is incredible. Just like, that's exactly how I felt. When I was like, oh, wow, I started the channel and it took off. And I was like, that's amazing. Really? Like, I can't believe it. And um, but once you sort of see what's possible with that, just embracing that energy, even on a daily basis of your North Node, you don't have to go jumping right into being a head fund, hedge fund manager or or going right into being, you know, um, a chef or whatever it is. It's kind of like if you can just embrace it a little bit at a time, because that will keep it from like the South node from blowing up in your face 
At least I've seen that to be the truth. It may not be true for everybody, but if you kind of are open to that North Node energy and go, okay, well, Gemini, geez, that's about writing books. That's about studying and learning things. It's also about organizational, like Martha Stewart-y kind of stuff. And and that's still, you know, in that eighth house, probably not Martha Stewart, but <laughs> but you just can like be curious. I just feel like being curious is the way to find your life's purpose. So I have a question for you, because I know you work with people and you help them to figure out all of this, I'm assuming. Have you ever had anyone where when you looked at their North Node and you looked at, you know, what their purpose, like what that direction might be, were completely shocked and blown oh, 100%. Away at that? <laughs> like this all the time, all the time, because, yeah, I teach classes in this and I haven't taught live for a while, but um, um, most of the time when I start working with it, when I start talking about okay, Virgo and Pisces, I start talking about you have a North Node in Pisces. Pisces is a spiritual connection. And it's about being connected to the the universe, being connected to the God source. Pisces is also very um, alone. It's about alone, walking the mountain alone. Pisces negative or lower vibration of Pisces can be addiction, Right. It can be things that um, are, you know, you're blocking your spiritual connection. And, you know, so you could even see that you're embracing that North Node in a negative way. You could even see that. But when I start talking about that and I'm like, OK, South Node is Virgo, like really wanting everything organized, wanting to know what my daily routines are. Pisces is like, hell no, I don't want any barriers or boundaries. I'm just going to float around here in the universe. And Virgo's like, oh, like that can't. That can't work, yeah. but it would, but it would work. And then people are like, oh, wow. Yeah. I, you know, there's a resonance that comes out when you start just like talking about what the possibilities are. Like, I'm not really talking about job titles or anything. Um, I'm talking about an energetic resonance or an expression of your life. You can be an amazingly spiritually connected lawyer. Okay. You can do something that may not be traditional, Pisces, right? So it may not be traditional, or you may be able to embrace something that you already have in a different way. And, you know, your purpose on this planet is really to be in joy, to be in joy, to shine that light for others to see. That's really the purpose. That pie lady shines like a beacon. She is so excited. She makes them in pie plates, in uh, glass pie plates, and she's never lost a pie plate. People deliver them back to her. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I love that. That's, I mean, it makes a lot of sense that it would help you embrace things more and, you know, not necessarily having to do a whole new career, but just allowing that to make what you're doing better. And just try, give it a try. I mean, sometimes people keep getting fired and keep getting fired and can't get hired in a certain industry. Maybe their skills have deteriorated or maybe they're, maybe they are burned out. Like I know a lot of teachers too, who are super burned out. They're burned out on a system or a way of doing it. They still are teachers at heart. They still are. And they could just be a teacher in a different way, you know? Um, and it's like, what are you burned out about? You know, um, so those kinds of things exist and looking at your North node and embracing the energy of the house, understanding the house is important. People I think blow off the house. I have my North node in Gemini. What house is it in? Because it does matter. A North node in Gemini in the 12th house is different than the North node in Gemini in the eighth house. So just be aware, pay attention to what the house is. It's a part of your life that is impacted by this nodal placement and um, pay attention to the sign. That's the energetic expression of it. Um, and just know that North Node and South Node right now in the cosmos, the North Node is transiting in Aries and the South Node is transiting in Libra. We just had an eclipse just two days ago as I'm talking, as we're talking in, um, in Libra. 
It was a lunar eclipse in Libra, and we will now have an eclipse April 8th in Aries, which is a massively important deal. Um, it is transiting across the United States. You'll be able to see it. Don't look at it directly, please. But <laughs> it is eclipses activation energy, and Aries is, it's a new moon, so it's planting the seeds for the future. So we're all impacted by the transits. The eclipses are about the nodes of the moon. And there's a lot of math. There's a lot of explanation as to why that is. But they all the eclipses, every time you see an eclipse, it's always a pair of signs. And it's connected to this nodal idea. Because we're, as a culture, as a people, as a tribe, as a whatever it is, family, our job is to progress. Our job is to reach toward that north node. So everybody's north node, whatever your particular personal one is, the transit right now in Aries is pushing us all to be bolder, to take bold action in our lives and to plant those seeds for the future. That is very good to know. <laughs> I've been hearing that a lot whenever I've been channeling messages for the, you know, the collective is to first of all, like let go of worry and stop allowing that to stress you out, but to realize that you need to take actionable steps towards your dreams or what it is that you're hoping to accomplish. So that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it, it started, uh, the North Node in Aries moved into Aries last summer and last July, and, and it will stay in Aries until January, 2025. And every time I um, I do a lot of work, obviously, you know, I do a lot of readings and everything like that. I am constantly seeing the emperor show up that we really have to step into our leadership abilities that, you know, me shining my light and you shining your light and everybody shining their light. Like it's a collective lift for everyone on the planet. So we really have to step into it now. It's getting closer. The time is getting, is drawing close where we really have to be quite loud with our lights yeah definitely I definitely feel the same way and I've been getting that message a lot lately so that makes total sense so if um there's anyone out there who wants to maybe get do you do readings for people to help them look at the astrology and figure out I have a I have a group called Pathfinders and we talk about these things every week it's a Wednesday live and i do a session like a little lesson right after that about aligning with your intuition so part of learning your north node is like recognizing what your intuition is saying to you so my pathfinders group we talk about it i have an astrology group every thursday so wednesdays and thursdays i do this as a group i have taught and i have a self-paced class on this on north node if you wanted to understand your own personal north node and then come on pathfinders and ask me a question and we'll talk more about it Awesome. And so if there's anyone out there listening who would like more information about that or would like to maybe follow you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, the YouTube channel is called Soulful Revolution TV. And if you Google Soulful Revolution, you're going to find me. We're everywhere. And um, my website is soulfulrevolutiontv.com. You can go and check out the classes and the memberships. Like I said, Pathfinders is is on there. But come on along to the YouTube channel and then you can watch your Gemini reading. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll have that in the show notes too. I'll have a link for the listeners. So if they want to go and watch your channel and learn more about their own birth charts and astrology, then they can easily find you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was good to talk to you. It was so wonderful having you here today. Thank you so much for shedding a little light on, you know, uh, we're all going to jump off of here and go find our North nodes. So thank you for helping <laughs> Good. Go do it. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being here with us today as well. As always, if you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a positive review from wherever you're listening. And of course, the greatest compliment you can pay me is to recommend this podcast to someone you think might also benefit from it. If you want to join us on Patreon, you can see this podcast interview. It is only available to my patrons. And I also go live there each week and do a card reading for those who show up on the live. And you also get daily readings from my Patreon page and you can join for free for seven days to see if you like it. If not, no big deal, no obligation to stay. As always, I hope you guys have a beautiful and amazing week. I am sending you guys so much love and light and I will talk to you soon.
Bye, guys.